Well, good evening, everyone. It's uh, my joy to welcome you to the wedding service of Leanne Elizabeth Livingston and Mark Wilson Sunderland. And we're going to have a wonderful evening, and they are so glad that you are here and a part of this to witness all that God has put together. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Your mother and I. This is a beautiful venue. We were talking about it at, here last night and then t again today. What a beautiful, beautiful room. That chandelier is gorgeous, and I keep looking at it, and it's a beautiful place, and you are beautiful, and, well, you're Mark. And <laughs> yes, yes. But I want you, if you would, picture with me the beginning of time. Garden of Eden, the first wedding, the sky was the canopy, instead of a, the, the beautiful rafters, the sky was the canopy, and all of the trees and the flowers were in bloom surrounding the wedding couple. All of God's creation stood attentive as the Holy God administered that very first wedding ceremony. What a glorious day that must have been. Its accounting is found in the second chapter of Genesis, where it says, Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he created. And the Lord God said, It is not good. For man to be alone. I will make a companion for him who will help him. So the Lord God formed from the soil every kind of animal and bird. He brought them to Adam to see what he would call them, and Adam chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, birds, and wild animals. But still, there was no companion suitable for him. So the Lord God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. He took one of Adam's ribs and closed up the place from which he had taken it. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and brought her to Adam. At last, Adam exclaimed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he was excited just like you are right now. She is part of my own flesh and bone. She will be called woman because she was taken out of man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. And that's why we're here today, to take two and make one. That's God math, <laughs> all right? And so, Mark, God wanted the very best for Adam, and he wanted the very best for you. This is God's best yes. for you. Yes, it is. So, she is gonna be a great help to you, and likewise, you'll be great help to him. And so, as y'all go down life's road together, You'll look back on this day, and it's going to be very special, and you're not going to remember half of it. <laughs> and that's why you have pictures. Yes. <laughs> but you'll always remember the commitment you made to the Lord this day. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity we have to stand here today and to do all this business in front of these wonderful witnesses, family, and friends. God, this is your business. You have brought this couple together, and we are excited to be a part of this celebration, celebrating what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue now our worship. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to see everybody uh, tonight. And Mark and Leanne, um, wanted a special part of this service tonight. And Mark and Leanne, as believers in Christ, want Jesus to be at the center of every part of their life, the center of their lifestyle, the center of their relationships, and even the center of their marriage. Ultimately, Mark and Leanne want to live lives of worship to God. They want every part of their life to reflect the one who created them, the one who loved them, the one who gives them hope and a purpose in a dark world. And then they, they also believe today that marriage did not originate in the heart of man. Marriage is not something that man made up, but marriage originated in the heart of God. And so here on this holy day, in this holy moment, they wanted one of the biggest elements in this service of a day on their wedding day where they come together as one 
to be worshiped. And they wanted to invite you to be a part of that. And so uh, we just want to encourage you now in, in any way that you feel comfortable. We want to invite you to sing with us. We want to invite you to worship with us. We want to invite you to honor God with us today. If you feel like standing, you can stand. If you want to stay seated, you can. But we're going to sing and glorify God in the next few moments with these songs. We want to invite you to sing with us.
Sing, I love you, Lord.
Well, here we are. Yep. It's the big day. You know it's the big day when the glitter gold guitar comes out. <laughs> a lot of twists and turns to get to this moment. Got a deployment somewhere. I think we had appendicitis somewhere. But we're here. And I just want to tell you, as someone who has made a very small deposit in your life, this is a special moment. You're going to remember this day with a lot of joy. You're going to remember this moment with a lot of happiness. I pray that when you remember this moment, you also remember it as a holy moment, a sacred significance. This has been a special time worshiping the Lord. I can't think of anything else in your life aside from your personal decision to follow Jesus. I can't think of anything more significant than the decision that you're going to make today to one another. I'd like to do something. I'd like to pause for just a moment. I'd like for you to turn around, and I'd like for you just to take this in for a moment. Just turn around. Literally turn around and look at those around you. Say hi. Wave to them. This moment in your life is unique in that there's a great number of people in this room who love you deeply and whom you love deeply as well. There are people in this room 
your family and friends around you who represent so much in your life. Your lives are an epic story. You understand story making very well. And many of the people in this room are the key characters that have defined your stories and their presence means so much today. The people in this room are a visible representation and a manifestation of the formative seasons and experiences that have made you who you are at this altar today. Conversations, laughter, tears, joy, mistakes, successes, pains, and many mundane, forgettable hours have been shared with people in this place. Proverbs chapter seven, uh, 27, verse 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. That is to say, we are formed very significantly by the people we share life with. With that in mind, this group corporately is a reflection of the two of you personally. Also, the people here represent a visible representation of God's steadfast love and his faithfulness to you. God's word says in 1 John 4, 12, that no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God's love lives in us and is made complete in us. We experience God's love most profoundly, I believe, in community, through love and friendship. There's so many friends represented in this room. The shared love in this place for you is the incarnation of the great love of God that he has for both of you individually. And our joy and excitement for your marriage today is only a shadow of the joy that God feels towards it. Your marriage and the vows that you take today are a precious thing in the eyes of God. Marriage is a sacred and holy thing in the eyes of God. And so with that in mind, I want to give a couple challenges and encouragements to you today. First, I want to encourage you to trust deeply in God's providence and his sovereignty in bringing you together to be married. To say that God is sovereign is simply to acknowledge that God's in control, that he orders our lives as he sees fit according to his good purposes. This in mind, we can be sure that the fact that you are standing here today or sitting here today and you're about to take these vows today is proof of God's intention that you would fall in love, that you would enter into the covenant of marriage together. Your love has been God's sovereign initiative. He sparked it. He protected it. He brought you to this moment. Leanne, long before the moment you knew Mark as a little boy <laughs> who sat on the road behind you at church, who went to school with all of your friends, God in his sovereignty selected him. He began preparing him for you. Leanne, you can trust God in this. Mark, this beautiful woman, you have somehow catfished into marrying you. Amen. That's good. Come on. Is God's gift to you to love, to serve, to cherish in every season that awaits you. He loves her. And he's been committed to preparing her for you. And now, he's called you to love her as Christ loves his church. In the difficult days in marriage, may you remember and trust in God's providence in bringing you together. And may this reality fill you with joy, fill your hearts with peace, your souls with resolve. May trust in God be the bedrock foundation that sustains you in the brightest of days, but more so in the darkest of days. Second, as the gravity of our culture pulls you towards living like all that exists is what can be seen, let your marriage always remind you that there are invisible, sacred, eternal realities always before us. Marriage is God's invention. It's not the invention of man. The vows you're about to take are holy and binding, first and foremost, because you're taking them in the sight of God. And in that, marriage reminds us of God's reality in our life. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul tells us 
Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. The mystery is profound, Paul says. I'm saying this, that it refers to Christ and the church. Mark, Leanne, marriage points us to the reality of God's eternal self-sacrificing love for us and his bride, the church. In light of this, the vows that you're going to take today come with great responsibility and great opportunity. And they're not to be taken lightly. The opportunity and responsibility is first to mirror to the world around you and to one another through the keeping of your vows, the reality of God's unwavering, self-sacrificing love for his church in Jesus Christ. With that in mind, today is a day of joy and reflection, hope and dependence on God's sustaining grace, celebration and prayerfulness. Your marriage, like all things, is about your eternal joy and God's eternal glory. And it serves as a window into the future joy of union with Christ for all who have trusted in him. Third, I want to remind you today that though our current cultural moment is obsessed with instant gratification, true blessedness comes not from big things done quickly in the sight of many, but from small, mostly overlooked, seemingly insignificant things done over long periods of time. Today's a mountaintop moment that you're never going to forget. But it won't be this mountaintop moment that ultimately sustains your marriage. That's right. It will be faithfulness to Christ, demonstrated through faithfulness to each other in the small, unseen moments. It won't be the excitement and the beauty of this day that sustains your marriage through the years. The pageantry of this moment, as beautiful as it is, and as right as it is, and as good as it is, will only last for an evening. It's going to fade from present to past. Brad's going to get on a plane and go to Albuquerque. Friends are going to get on in their cars and go back home. And you will enter into the lifelong journey of faithfulness and commitment to one another. Implicit in your vows today is a commitment to love one another in the little ways. To look for opportunities to serve one another. In the small, seemingly insignificant moments that make for a great marriage and a great life together. Marriage with Christ at the center will teach you how to look for opportunities to serve one another. Will teach you how to choose to speak life. How to choose to forgive one another, to forsake bitterness and resentment. Mark, Leanne, it's so important that you enter into marriage not despising the little things. Faithfulness in the little things. It will be these things that foster deep joy and beauty in your marriage. Fourth and lastly, I want to encourage you to remember to lean always on the radical grace of Jesus to sustain your marriage. A famous pastor once said, I would probably think I was a pretty good guy if I wasn't married. <laughs> As a married man myself, I understand his point, and that is that marriage is life in close, consistent proximity to another person. And in that close, consistent proximity, our flaws of character are more clearly displayed. In other words, there's nothing like marriage that will teach you and show you what a great sinner you really are. <laughs> marriage is a mirror exposing us to our true selves. And so you both sit in a moment, stand at the altar, committing yourself to a fellow sinner who's in need of the moment-by-moment -moment sustaining grace purchased on the cross by Jesus Christ. Over the years, you're going to see the best of each other and the worst of each other. And you will both need to learn to continually extend to one another the grace that you've received in Jesus Christ. With Christ at the center of your lives and your hearts, your marriage will be built upon the rock 
Your marriage will be able to withstand many storms. So above all else, I want to encourage you today, fight together to keep Christ and his love for you at the center of your lives and your marriage. It will ultimately be your love for Jesus that guards and sustains your love for one another until death do you part. Let's pray together. Father, we stand before you today with so much to be grateful for. Even in these unique and often trying days, days filled with obstacles and inconveniences, God, your goodness and your faithfulness are still on full display. And we give you thanks for your goodness, seen in the love of Mark and Leanne for you and one another. Thank you, God, for how you've led them to this moment and to this place where they stand before you, one another, and before people that they love. And they enter into the marriage covenant today. God, be seen and known and glorified in your marriage. Father, we thank you for your presence with us today by your spirit. And above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Through his life and his death, we approach you with this gratitude. And we enjoy this moment. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Uh, that was a powerful word. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, today, last night even, we have heard a lot about God's love. It's the appropriate thing to talk about on a day like this. You've heard about how God's love, uh, this all represents his love for the church. And I don't, y'all know these people, I don't know any, hardly, I know a few people. I don't, most of these people I don't know. I'm Tommy. Hi. Uh, so I don't know them, and so I don't know your backgrounds. I don't know where you're from. So I'm going to speak to you for just a moment. And that is this God's love thing that we've talked about today. Uh, you may not be aware of what that really means. Because you hear it, you see it on TV. Maybe you see a preacher on the corner, street corner or somewhere. And we at Athens, we, we see him all the time. And but maybe you have never really heard what God's love means. And it's one verse. Uh, his grandpa, my dad, Bobby, would say, The gospel in one verse is, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, all of you are whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's God's love. So when we talk about God's love here today, that's the love. That's the bar of God's love. And if you're here today and you've never experienced his love, please, they would beg you, I would beg you, do not leave here today without experiencing God's love in a personal way. And if you have any questions about that, don't ask them, but you can ask me or Brother Matt. You can ask them. You can ask them. They'll be busy. But... Uh, Matt and I, we would let, they know, not just they're busy, they know, they know. But, but Matt and I, we'd love to share with you more about God's love, and I know that that's y'all's heart yeah. as well, yeah. that they have that opportunity today. Yeah. So, again, God's love, we talked about this yesterday, Matt and I did, how he was talking about that, and even Kyle last night talking about it, and golly, how do you do that? I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you reach that bar of God's love because we all say I mean I love ice cream you know but that's not the bar you know you may love I, the Braves or the Bulldogs or some of those other lesser teams but 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 that's not the bar Christ is the bar his unconditional love is the bar but how do we do that because we're not God or we're not God that's our first thing to understand, is we're not God. Jesus is God. We're not. So how do we do that? Well, we can only do it with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And the power of the Holy Spirit, which he promises, lives inside of each of you. And through his word, which teaches us what to do. God would never ask you to do anything that he hasn't told you 
how to do. So I am going to share, again, for those that in their wedding party, 1 Corinthians 13. Now, for those that don't know the Sunderland family, we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of laughter. Uh, and your marriage, I want y'all to have fun. And I've already been around you enough. You like to laugh and you like to have fun. And these things are very serious. But at the same time, as my brother alluded to a minute ago, marriage is exciting day by day and fun. And there are moments in those days, though, that you need this instruction. So you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> I think it's very appropriate that the very first thing that God tells us about his love, his perfect love, his holy love, love suffers long. Well, that's kind of the New King James Version. Patience is what that is. You've known him a long time. Mm -hmm. Your patience is just beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so just don't think you've like got three quarters of the way there because <laughs> you haven't. You're, you're going to be patient with him whenever he, you know, gets in mark mode. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when he gets in mark mode, uh -huh. which he's been handed down by his, his uncle uh, Mike, and when he gets in mark mode, you're going to have to be patient mm -hmm. and let it, it'll subside. Just let it go. Mark, when she is still trying to, after 15, 20 minutes, decide which pair of shoes that she wants to wear, because you've already spent 30 minutes on which dress that she was going to wear, you're going to exercise patience. You're going to sit there and go, yes, dear, that's wonderful. I think that pair is wonderful. Yes. Oh, no, you're right. Take that back. You're going to bring in another one. <laughs> and you're going to exercise patience because you love her with the love of Jesus Christ. Next, love is kind. Mark. <laughs> I'm not so worried about Leanne going all lawyer on you. I think she's going to be <laughs> kind. I, I've around been her mostly kind. You will not nail her to the wall. <laughs> uh, you're going to be kind in your communications. Whether or not you've sat there for 20 minutes or not, you're going to be kind in whatever you say to her. And that will show that unconditional love of Jesus. I didn't say it'd always be easy. Right. All right. <laughs> so, next, love does not envy. Well, that's kind of a hard one. What does that really mean? Well, it really means to celebrate each other's successes. Mm -hmm. That means when, when, when Mark has a, a great idea that does something happens and, and you have a great moment and he comes and he wants to tell you all about it, you need to take a breath and listen. And you probably got 17 things that he hasn't done you want him to do, but let him celebrate the successes. When she comes and she's had a great moment in court that day, she's had a great thing happen or whatever's happened in, in her day, you need to take a few minutes and celebrate her successes because you're not going to envy each other's successes. You're going to support and, and celebrate each other's successes. And by doing so, show each other God's love. That's the one I feel confident about so far. You're good. Yeah, we're good on that. Yeah, we're one for three. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, in, yes. In baseball, in baseball you'd be an all-star. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is not baseball. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Very simple. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about us. It's not my way. It's not that Elvis song that everybody made fan that a bunch of saying, you know, I did it my way. No, it's our way. It's us. Mm -hmm. And we have a tendency as humans to really want our own way. It bubbles out of our sin nature. We want our own way and we want to fight for our own way, whether it's the smallest little thing that you're like, where do you want to hang this picture? Or it's some bigger thing about what it is you're going to do tomorrow. It's, it doesn't matter what it is. It's us, and it's not my way. Next, Mark. Yes. It does not behave rudely. 
It goes back to being kind. All right, go back to that really. It does not seek its own, what we just said. Now, this next one is really challenging, and it takes the power of the Holy Spirit in your life to do this. It's not provoked. Most of America walks around provoked today. Just read Facebook. We have a mess in this world because we all want to walk around provoked. My rights, my way. But God says, do not walk around with a chip on your shoulder ready to be provoked. Mm -hmm. Don't presume what she has said is an attack. Don't filter that in through all that junk that we have up here in life. And then you're ready to come back. No. Listen to listen. Don't listen to respond. That's good. Yeah. Listen to listen. Don't listen to respond. As a lawyer, you'll probably have to fight that from your training. You know? <laughs> and from uh, who she is. <laughs> this is my time. All right. <laughs> I'll shut up. Love is patient. Yeah, love yeah, is yeah, patient. Yeah, 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 patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patient. That's right. Very patient. Very patient. Uh, uh, from her training, because like uh, Lisa and I, we've talked about before, and you, you understand this too, as musicians, we're trained to be critical. We spent four years in college learning how to criticize things. And, and, and you learned how to attack truths and, and slight truths and stuff like that. So it's a very important that we allow God to work in those situations. Don't presume an attack. Don't let it, don't be easily provoked. I spent some time on that because it's a big deal. All right. Thinks no evil. Well, that seems to be pretty easy, doesn't it, Mark? Thinks no evil. What that really is saying keeps, I wrote this in caps right here, keeps no account of evil. What that's really saying is you don't have a list, and you don't have a list. When, the, when we all go to bed at night, the list is gone. You don't keep a list of wrongs. There is no, oh, you remember two weeks ago, you remember last month. No, there is no list because God's love covers the list. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Y'all are going to both cheer on and support and go after with God's power, God things, truth. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to support things that are not truth. And truth, capital T, is God's truth. Mm -hmm. And y'all know that. And you know the truth. You've had great teaching in your life. You know God's word. And you're going to celebrate the truth. And you're not going to celebrate iniquity. You're... And so, and Mark, that also means no I told you so's. Good. Good. You're doing good. All right. Very good. Keep it up. Uh, next, love bears all things. That's simply no matter what comes. Uh, I know Mark's life, I've been around for the whole thing. I, I know a little bit about what you've been through. In life, we've all, you know, you think, wow, I've been through so much. I've done this. I've had this experience. There's more. There's more coming. I don't know what it is, but there's more coming. And this whole thing about God doesn't give you any more than you can handle, that is not in the Bible. That is not truth. God purposely gives you more than you can handle so you can go to Him. Yeah. That's right. And through His love and through His power, you will bear all, but you can't do it without the power of God in you. He bears all. All right. Believes all things. When you don't understand... Give her the benefit of the doubt. When you can't get him, just give him the benefit of the doubt. Hopes all things. You're going to look forward in your lives together, and you're going to look forward with a positive view. When you see that next day and you see the next thing that you're going to be involved, it is going to be with hope. It is going to be with a positive view of what God is going to do next in your life. You're not going to presume negative things on each other, negative things on your life together. You're going to presume positive things because God has you. He has you. Endures all things. There will be tough days. I don't know what those are going to be. But you're going to endure those days through the power of God living in you. So 
Leanne, there will be those days you'll just have to endure Mark. He's going to get in Mark mode, and you just get through it, and at the end of the day, he'll, it'll subside, and, and the next day he'll be back to normal, and you'll be good. It's good. I'll pay you later. <laughs> All right. All right. Lastly, and most importantly, through God's Holy Spirit working in and through you both, this thing he says in his word, verse 8, love never fails. It's like when the trapeze artists are at the circus and they're flying around and everyone's looking at them flying around up there, but there's a net underneath. God has you. Your love, as expressed his love in and through you to each other, will never fail. You might, you might blow it because none of us can live up to this thing. It's been funny. We've, we've talked about it, but none of us in here can live up to this because this is God-level love. God-level love. And you're going to blow it. And when you blow it, you look at each other and you go, I love you with God love and I'm sorry. And God says, you have to love me back. <laughs> and you make it right because none of us can reach the bar. We're all human. We're all going to mess up. But because God is in you, that grace that we talked about earlier, it's in there. And you show it to each other and you love each other with that level, that bar. God so loved the world. And you love with that bar, you can face anything and it will never let you down. So, Leanne and Mark, each of you have pledged yourselves in your marriage in Christ. So I now ask you to enter into this holy covenant with God through the exchanging of vows. Please join your right hands together and face one another there. Are you all ready? Ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Been ready. Been ready. <laughs> yeah, you're the one that hired two preachers. I'm just telling you so. <laughs> so, Leanne and Mark. Uh, so here we go. Mark, you're getting me messed up. Mark. <laughs> Please repeat after me. Right. In the presence of God and family and friends. In the presence of God and family and friends. I mark take you, Leanne. I mark take you, Leanne. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. According to God's word. According to God's word. And through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. And now, Leanne, please repeat after me. In the presence of God and family and friends. In the presence of God and family and friends. I, Leanne, take you, Mark. I, Leanne, take you, Mark. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. According to God's word. According to God's word. And the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. So, the ring has long been a symbol and a covenant of marriage. It's, it's, it's something that, that we came up with. But it's a great, great symbol. I still have mine on 37 years. Right there. So, it is made of gold. I asked you about that. You said well, gold and white gold, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, it's made of gold. Uh, there's all kinds of wedding rings out now, and it's okay, but... For, the, for my thing today, just stick with me, okay? <laughs> and it's okay. Whatever your wedding ring is made out of is wonderful, and it works. It's great. <laughs> I don't want any letters or cards after this, all right? <laughs> so, but, but the cool thing about gold is, and, and I, I started doing this in my in wedding ceremonies because I noticed this about my, my ring one day. I, I took it off, and, and it wasn't perfectly round anymore. And I thought, well, I broke it. You know, something's wrong. And then I realized what had really happened was, in life, it had gotten these little nicks here and there. 
Well, that's what happens in life. We get little nicks here and there, little scratches on us. And it, and it, wasn't, it was kind of an oval, but it had shaped perfectly to my finger. And it represented that what's going to happen in your life as you shape, God shapes each of you individually and you as a couple. That's what that ring is going to represent. It's not going to be that perfect little circle anymore. It's going to be something that's uniquely shaped to you and he's going to shape to you. And it's going to have little, eventually it's going to have some little nicks in it. It's going to have little scratches. But that's okay because that's life. And so I just wanted to share that with you. When you look at that ring, I want you to think about that. So, Mark, do you have a token of your love for Leanne? <laughs> there was some doubt. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, as a ceaseless reminder of the covenant you have made with God this hour, please place your ring upon the ring finger of Leanne's left hand and repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And with all I am, with all I am, I now thee endow. I now thee endow. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Leanne, do you have a token of your love for Mark? I do. As a ceaseless reminder of the covenant you have made with God this hour, please place your ring upon the ring finger of Mark's left hand and repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. And with all I am. I now thee endow. I now thee endow. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Very good. We're going to now continue our worship uh, with communion. Mark and Leanne have chosen to take communion together today. And the bread that they're about to receive is a symbol of the body of Jesus that was broken for us on the cross. The wine that they're going to 